Thank you so much for joining me online. I'm Kevin Hurd and welcome to this edition of Kevin Talks Tech, my technology blog and podcast. It's all about making technology more simple, easy, and fun to understand. All right, so today we have a big topic on the table to talk about and that is drones. The FAA has developed some important laws that all current and future drone owners need to know about. Now for the purpose of this video, we are going to refer to drones as small unmanned aircraft. This is the language the FAA uses in official documentation. Now first, just to give you an idea of how popular these vehicles and devices are, the FAA is projecting around 2.4 million small unmanned aircraft to be sold in 2015. These are devices that are moving around in national airspace again, mind you. Now previously, the only way to register all aircraft, including small devices like what we commonly call drones, has always been a paper-based system. Recently, the DOT and FAA had realized that this was too difficult and burdensome to small aircraft operators, as well as really the FAA itself. The paper system is still available and it's going to stay that way, but we're now moving toward a new streamlined online registration system. Now let's talk through some of the basics because this of course, this is a huge impact for a lot of people that own drones or those unmanned aircraft, small unmanned aircraft. And really what we're talking about, again, is small unmanned aircraft used for hobby or recreation purposes, what the FAA calls model aircraft. We're talking about aircraft between 0.55 and 55 pounds that needs to be registered, including any attachments on board, such as a camera. We know that many people like to attach cameras. And for those who have flown a small unmanned aircraft prior to December 21st of 2015, you have until February 19th of 2016 to register it. Now, if you buy it or receive it as a gift after December 21st, it needs to be registered before it even flies in the sky outdoors. Anyone using the online registration system, mind you again, does have to be 13 years or older. The registration fee is $5, but actually the government is waiving the fee for the first 30 days. That means it's free to register from December 21st until January 20th. Now, the online registration system does not yet support registration of small UAS, again, unmanned aircraft systems used for the purpose other than hobby or recreation. For example, using an unmanned aircraft in connection with a business, the FAA is developing enhancements that will allow such online registration by the spring of 2016. Now once registered, you'll get a certificate with your name, registration date, as well as a number, and the aircraft must display that registration number. Certificates are good for three years and then have to be renewed, so that's good to keep in mind. So why is this registration even taking place? Let's take a closer look at a notice from the FAA and DOT, the Department of Transportation. It reads, quote, since February of 2015, reports of potentially unsafe UAS, UAS operations have more than doubled, and many of these reports indicated that the risk to manned aviation or people and property on the ground was immediate. For example, the agency has received reports of unmanned aircraft at high altitudes in congested airspace. Unmanned aircraft operations near to this forecast is based on a largely unconstrained operating environment. As recently as August of 2015, the FAA investigated reports by four pilots who spotted an unmanned aircraft flying between 8 and 13 miles from the approach to Newark Liberty International Airport. The FAA also investigated a similar incident at John F. Kennedy International Airport in August. The risk of unsafe operation will increase as more small unmanned aircraft enter the NAS, the national airspace, and are flown by individuals who have little to no knowledge of airspace restrictions or safety implications. Over the past several months, the reports of unauthorized and potentially unsafe UAS operations have escalated at an increasing rate. And there's good reason to believe that the numbers of incidents will continue to rise substantially with the projected rapid rise in UAS sales in the coming months. Now you can see how unmanned aircraft reports are generally trending up when looking at this chart. The report talks spe about specific incidents, a drone that grounded planes near a firefight in California back in June. Another incident in September, an unmanned drone flew into Louis Armstrong Stadium five miles from LaGuardia and crashed into the stands there. Back in October of 2015, a drone unmanned aircraft crash caused a span of power lines to fall in West Hollywood, impacting power to 640 customers. And in January of last year, notably a drone operator crashed his unmanned aircraft 
on the house of the or on the lawn rather of the White House lawn. Now the DOT and FAA say, uh, quote, many of the owners of these new aircrafts have no prior aviation experience and have little for known understanding of how the NAS works. Knowledge of the safe operating requirements and additional authorizations required to conduct certain operations. Aircraft registration provides an immediate and direct opportunity for the agency to engage and educate these new users prior to operating their unmanned aircraft and to hold them accountable for non-compliance with safe operating requirements, thereby mitigating the risk associated with the influx of operations. Now, penalties are not discussed in this documentation other than suggestions by the groups that made up the laws or created the laws put in, put into them, so we can't talk about that. But again, this is a statutory law and it must be followed. Now, should you have any questions, we do have information up on kevintalkstech.com with links. You can read further into the law as well as visit the registration website. Thank you again for joining me. I'm Kevin Hurd. Have a fantastic day.